Hello everyone. I am very glad to welcome you all to lecture 6 of this bioinformatics for schoolers course. So in this lecture we will be seeing what are all the major databases which are used for sequence retrieval in any bioinformatics analysis. So let's get started. So first of all we need to know what exactly is a database. So by definition a database is an organized collection of structured information or data which is stored and accessed electronically so here in this definition we come across two terminologies one is data the other one is information although in most cases these two words are used interchangeably they have a very slight difference so a data basically means raw unorganized facts whereas a uh, information means processed organized and structured form of data so this means that a data can be converted into information when we analyze or process it so having said that now talking about what are the different types of biological databases so on the basis of the source of data the biological databases can be categorized into two major types one is the primary databases and the another one is secondary databases so primary database usually comprises data in a very original form so let us consider the examples or example of a sequence data or a structured data it is a very much raw form of a data so all such information are stored in some databases and they are termed as primary databases whereas when we look at the secondary databases this usually comprises the data that is derived by analyzing the primary data sets uh to give an example for this let us consider the example of genetic variants so we get a genetic variant information only after we analyze the sequence data so this is this is where we are analyzing the primary data to get some uh, some more data out of it so such data are stored in secondary databases there is yet another classification of biological databases which is done on the basis of the nature of data what kind of data is stored in a database when we look at that the biological databases can be categorized into three major things one is the sequence database the other one is the structured database and the third one is is categorized into others that is all those information which could which cannot be categorized into the first two things or usually put under the third branch so as the name suggests a sequence database usually contains the sequence information this can be a protein sequence or this can be a nucleotide sequence when we look at the structural databases uh, also again here as the name suggests it will contain all the structure based structure related information like for example protein structures so these are the major classifications of biological databases now that we had an idea about uh the background of what exactly is a database what are the different types of databases now let us have a look on what exactly is the purpose of having a public data resource or a database so usually these databases are either uh, presented as a web interface or a search interface so both are uh, both can sound very similar with the only difference is that in search interface you will have an option to search your query and go through the page and why do we use these data repositories and what is the primary aim of providing such data resources so the first and foremost thing is to access so there are a lot of biological experiments which are being done a lot of data which is generated out of it and then these data are always put into some place or into some kind of a resource for the only matter that these can be accessed by people and they can be used for any kind of analysis so the first and foremost thing is to access and download our desirable data so that we can perform some kind of analysis using those data sets and once what kind of analysis the very basic kind of studies which we do or called as the comparative studies where we find the difference between two organisms or different between two genes how different they are or how similar they are so these are some of the basic steps or basic exercises which we do when we access the data from a resource and one more thing which should be taken into consideration is that whenever we perform our own analysis and we generate our own data these database some of these databases provide us with an option where we can submit the data which we generated from our experiments so that other people can also have a look or can also access and download the the data which we submitted 
so like like it was told in the previous slide these are all the major steps which we will be uh, taking when we look into the databases like first of all we get to access the sequences these sequences can be a gene sequence a protein sequence or it can be a organism genome of an organism and once we uh, get to know where we find these sequences the, the the very immediate step we would be interested to do is to download those sequences quickly do some small analysis and then we want to visualize how the data looks so these are all some of the basic steps which we'll we'll be interested in uh, doing when we access these biological data resources so having said all this in today's uh, lecture we will be focusing on the first two steps how are we going to access certain data resources and then how are we going to download those data so for having said that first of all we need to know what are all the publicly available data resources where should we go and search for the data so for that here i have listed some of the popular or very routinely used for biological databases so uh, the first one is ncbi ncbi is national center for biotechnology information and uh, in this page itself there is a, a sub page uh, which is exclusively dedicated for all the virus data related information so that is called as ncbi virus similarly we have another page called as onsemble we have ucsc genome browser we have european nucleotide archive so these are some of a very few examples which are routinely used like this there are many other databases which store a wide variety of informations which can be accessed these are also publicly available so how do we navigate through these databases to collect any gene or genome information so in all the previous lectures you would have come through a lot of terminologies like genomes genes rna dna nucleotide and everything of this would make a sense when we are able to have a look at it and download it and get to know what are all the possible exercises we can do with those uh, sequence data sets so our major question now is to where can we find these gene or protein or genome files in our previous lecture we also had an idea about the file formats how a genome file would look like how a nucleotide fasta sequence would look like so where exactly are we going to find all these files so the very first uh, um, uh, example of a database which we are going to look in today's lecture is ncbi which uh, as i had mentioned previously it is national center for biotechnology information it was developed by national library of medicine at nih which is national institute of health so here is the link for that particular database so this database was exclusively developed to store a vast amount of data which will be very helpful in information processing so this is one example database which will be which we will be looking at in this lecture like this there are many other databases which can be explored and uh, which which also has a lot of information related to genes genomes and proteins so uh, with ncbi as an example database so this is how the home page of ncbi would look like and uh, like hi like i have highlighted here in the red box here you we have multiple options like what do we want to search for if we, if we want to search for a gene or if we want to search for a genome or for a protein or are we interested to looking at a particular genetic variant all those options can be selected from here and if we want to look at a genome this is how the result will look like for example here we have the human genome so the result page would look something like this and if we want to look at a gene for example let us consider the braca gene this is how the result would look like so um, now that we have seen so now that we have a quick idea of how are we going to access the page and how are we going to browse through the data how is our output or the result page going to look like let's have a quick demo of how are we going to access this information so that we will have a better clarity want to access the ncbi database all we need to do is we just need to go to our browser and then we need to type ncbi and then the very first link which says national center for biotechnology information is what we are interested to access so once we go inside that here this is how the home page looks like and then in the top left corner we will see an options box 
where we see a drop down menu so by clicking on that we have multiple options like assembly bio collections bio project bio sample and we also see gene genome and in addition to that we can also see protein protein clusters and snps so now as we are interested to access some genome data let us click on this genome option and then we need to put in the organism's name if we want to like let us consider uh, for example let us search human genome so i type homo sapiens which is humans and then i give the search so once we start the search this is how the result page looks like so starting it just gives a very quick uh, information or summary and then it gives the organism overview saying that homo sapiens which are humans and it describes about the study to learn more about that we can just press on this more option and then it gives a summary of the sequence data how many sequence assemblies sequence read counts and then a quick statistics on the total length and the protein count and this is uh, what is the release number because the genome sequences often gets updated so it also gives the annotation release number it gives a list of publications if we want to view more we can just press on that it gives the list of publications and then it gives the information about each chromosome also like for chromosome 1 what is their fseq id what is the size what is the percentage of gc content so many other information how many genes are there in chromosome 1 so all that information is provided in the representative section and here we have a quick look of the chromosomes and by pressing on each of these chromosomes it 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 will open in the genome data viewer so it will it uh, it will just magnify the chromosome data and then it can be viewed and it also gives the link for other data resources like encode hugo and mgc now that we have accessed the database and we also have an idea what are all the information which is present how are we going to download this data so to do that when we look at the very first uh, summary box we see that there's an option download sequences in fasta format so like now when we quickly brush our previous lecture where we saw about the different types of uh, file formats we would have come across that fasta format is the most uh, standardly used it's the most standard format for storing the sequence information so the genome sequence information is again stored in the form of a fasta format so if we want to download this format all we need to uh, do is just click on we need to download the human genome data in the fasta format so we just need to click on that and then we will we will have uh, get a message like if you want to download this is anywhere so this is how we access the ncbi resource we we get to navigate through the multiple options which are available in the ncbi resource and then we can search for genome data so now uh, for a demo we did it for homo sapiens so here we can search for any other organism and then we can uh, we also saw how are we going to download the sequence data in the form of a fasta file now coming to the next uh, exercise how are we going to uh, view or access gene information and how are we going to download the gene information so like we did uh, like we did in our previous exercise first of all we are going to choose the option so here we are just going to press this drop down button and then we are going to choose gene and let us consider some gene for example let us consider the braca gene the human braca gene so once we type that we just need to press enter that is search and uh, we'll have our results page so it gives all the possible results it gives braca1 and then uh, of homo sapiens it gives the same for mouse it gives the same for cat it gives the same for dog so for multiple organisms it just gives us the information so what are we interested in we are interested in homo sapiens so we just need to press on this first link and then it will take us to the results page so this is how the results page look like 
So this is the complete report of the gene. It tells it's the full report of the gene. The first line gives us the gene information. It is the BRCA gene. And then it is which organism? This is Homo sapiens. It also tells you, so every gene has a particular ID so that it is easy for us to access it. So the gene ID is 672. And it also says as these uh, sequence information are usually like uh, routinely updated, it also gives us the date of update. When was it last updated? Then we have a summary where it tells a range of information like the, what is the official symbol, what is the name, what is the primary source. You, we can also read about a very quick summary about this gene. So like if we see here, this gene encodes a 190 kilodalton nuclear, nuclear phosphoprotein that plays a role in maintaining genomic stability and it also acts as a tumor suppressor. So this gives us a very quick background of what exactly is the BRCA1 gene about. So any gene you want to search, this summary section will give you a background information about that particular gene. And if we come down, we get to see the genomic context, like where is this gene located? This gene is located in chromosome 17. And uh, like we would have, uh, you would have got familiar in most of the previous lectures about the structure of a gene. A gene will be comprised of exons and introns. So if we see the BRCA1 gene, this gene has about 31 exons. And then it will also tell, it will give as a table format, it will tell you which assembly, which chromosome and what is the location. We can, we, uh, we also get an option to view it in the track viewer. So these are all the information we get when we search for a particular gene, be it any organism, whatever is the organism of interest and whatever is the gene of interest. This is how we need to access the NCBA resource and we will get to know the information. Now, coming to the next step of like we downloaded the genome data, how are we going to download the uh, gene data? So here it is little bit very straightforward. There's a button here in the right uh, upper right corner that says download data sets. So when we press that, again, most of the sequence information, be it a genome sequence or be it a gene sequence, most of uh, the most commonly used format is FASTA format. So we just uh, click that and we get an option to choose if we want to download a protein sequence or if we want to download a gene sequence, which is basically the nucleotide sequence or the transcript sequence. So we can choose any of this. So if I choose the gene sequence, and then all we can choose our own file name and all we need to do is to just download this. So our file will get downloaded. So this is how we will access the NCBI resource. So now can we access only gene or the genome information? Is there any specific database where we can uh, access uh, all protein related information? Yeah. So we have uh, in this lecture, we are going to see an example of uh, an exclusive protein database, which is called as Uniprot. So like we see here, this is how the homepage of the Uniprot uh, database looks like. And we have multiple options, like we can uh, uh, search for the proteins, we can search for what species, we can search based on their protein clusters, and we can also get access to their sequence. We can get access to the protein sequence. So. Now let, let's take a very quick demo of how to navigate through this Uniprot database and get some quick protein related information. So this is how uh, the result page of uh, the Uniprot database would look like. Suppose if we check for the BRCA1 uh, human protein, this is how our result page would look like. So like we had a very quick demo of uh, how to access the NCBI database and collect the information about gene and genomes, let us quickly go through the uh, Uniprot database. Let's have a very quick demo of how do we access this database and how do we navigate through the results page of the protein databases. Although we had an option in NCBI where there, where there was an option to access through the protein uh, resources, there are some dedicated databases which contains protein information. And one such database is the Uniprot database. So let us just access the Uniprot database. So we just need to type Uniprot in our browser and then press enter. So this is the site which or this is the database which we are interested in. And then once we enter into that, this is how the page would look like. This is how the home page would look like.
So this is how the homepage of uh, uh, the Uniprod database looks like. And here we can find that uh, there's a search bar where we can search, like they have provided the examples, like we can search for the protein name or we can uh, give the organism name or we can give the protein ID. Like we had a specific ID for genes. We also have specific ID for proteins. So we can put the protein ID or the organism ID. There are multiple ways of search, which is uh, enabled here. And we can also uh, see through protein species, protein clusters and sequence archive as we have discussed in the previous slide. So now for ease or for better clarity, let us search for the BRCA1 protein. And then I am just pressing search. So this is how the results page will look like. And then it is giving, it is giving us all the possible uh, options. Like it is telling us what is the entry, what is the entry name, the protein name, what is the associated gene and what is the organism name and finally what is the length, length of each of this protein. So like if we see the BRCA1 of human, we see that the total length is 1863 amino acids. So if we want to know more details about this, we just press here on that entry and then these are all, we, we look at the left hand side, we have a list of options to navigate through this page. So if we want to know, first of all, it gives a very quick summary. What is the protein? Which gene is responsible for encoding that protein? And what or what is the organism name? How many amino acids? And what is the protein existence level? So it is evident at the protein level. And now if we want to know more details, we can access through these multiple options which are provided in the left hand side. Like if we want to know the function, it gives a very quick summary about the functions and the evidences. Like it says which uh, scientific literature uh, gave that evidence that this function exists for that particular protein. Also, if we want to know about the names and taxonomy, it just says us the name, what is the alternate name. Like if we see here, the alternate names are ring finger protein 53. And ring type E3 ubiquitin transferase BRCA1. So likewise, we have a lot of names. It gives the gene names, which organism. And then we can also see the subcellular location. So where on where and all can we find this protein? So it says nucleus in cytoplasm, how many isoforms are present. We can also see about the diseases and variants and what all diseases are this protein involved. And then we can see uh, the PTMs, the processing mechanisms, we can see where is it expressed, in which tissue is it. So it say, says about the tissue specificity, is it particularly expressed in some tissues or is it like globally expressed? And then it also talks about the interaction, what type of interactions, how many subunits this protein has, what is the structure. So it just says us the features, showing the features of turn, helix, beta strand, so all this information is also included here. So I uh, here we will also be able to view the protein structure. And we can have a look at the families and domains. What are all the different domains which are present in this protein? And finally coming to the sequence and isoforms. So here we, we can have a look at what is the exact protein sequence. So like we saw this particular BRCA1 protein, it was 1863 amino acid long. So it starts with, it says the length, what is the uh, Daltons, how many Daltons it, uh, is the protein uh, size. And then he, we, here, if we see, we will have the complete sequence. And from here, when we want to move to the next step, that is to download the sequence, we can just simply press. This is also very straightforward. We have an option to download the protein sequence. So all we need to do is just press on this download. So it will just give a new page so that we can either copy this to our clipboard and then we can save, save it as a new uh, protein FASTA file. So this is how we access the protein information from one of the uh, protein databases, which is Uniprot. So similarly, there are multiple other protein databases which can be explored. So in all our examples, which we had seen uh, in the past few minutes, we were searching for human genome. We were searching for some genes, human genes, and some human proteins. That does not mean that we are will be able to access the uh, information of only the human-related information. 
So these databases hold a vast variety of informations which belong to a vast range of geo, vast range of organisms also. So now let us take a very quick look into uh, the viral genomes, which database uh, do we refer to or which database do we access, how do we access and all about viral genomes. So here we have a very quick exercise. How do we suppose if we want to retrieve the uh, SARS-CoV-2 So, in all our previous examples, uh, we were searching for human genome and the BRCA1 gene, which is a human gene. Again, when we searched through the Uniprot, we were searching for the BRCA1 protein, which is again human. But this does not mean that, that these databases are limited to only human or homo sapiens. So, they have a wide, a wide range of information, uh, which belongs to a wide range of organisms also. This does not exclude viruses. So there are databases like I had mentioned previously in one of the slides. There are uh, databases which are very exclusively dedicated for viral genomes also. So like we saw NCBI virus, which is uh, a subpage of the NCBI is very much exclusively dedicated for all the viral sequences. So now let us quickly do uh, uh, an example search of how do we retrieve some SARS-CoV-2 genomes. So this is how the homepage of NCBI virus looks like. And here we have options to search by the sequence. If we have any sequence, we can just paste it here and see which virus it belongs to. Or we can search by virus. We just need to put the virus's name. In our case, if we are interested to search for SARS-CoV-2 virus, we just need to put SARS-CoV-2 virus name and then it will give us all the results. So how exactly the results would look like? So this is how a results page would look like. It just gives you an option to download the information and it also gives you all the available list of SARS-CoV-2 viruses. So it gives you an accession number, what is the virus name, who submitted this information. So like we had uh, discussed in one of the pre previous slides, some databases gives us an option to submit the data which is generated. So in that case, who submitted the data? The submitter's information also pops up in the database from which organization, when was it done? So all such information are provided. When we see at the tab here, we, we get to see that there's a nucleotide tab, there's a protein tab, and there's a RefSeq genome tab. So this means that we also get access to see the nucleotide sequence, and we, we can also see the protein sequence of those viruses, whichever we are searching for. So now coming to the end of this session, let's quickly have a recap of this session, what all we saw in, the, in today's lecture. So we first started with what exactly is a database, what are all the different types of databases, why do we use these databases on a regular basis, and how we also had a very quick demo on how to access these databases, what are all the options available in the databases, how exactly do we go step by step in downloading the biological data from these public uh, resources. So this marks the end of this session. Thank you.